I didn't feel I was getting the credit I deserved because of like, you know, I don't know, various circumstances. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to like make something that was just undeniable and infectious and made people feel like they didn't want to put it down. Hey, what's going on, man? Not too much. How are we doing? I'm doing well. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, happy to. Awesome. I'm Adam. Nice to meet you. Hi, Adam. I'm Riz. Riz. Uh, so this podcast is about you and your journey in music, and we'll talk about uh, the new album. Cool. Sounds great. Thank Sweet. you. Yeah, of course. Uh, so first off, where were you born and raised? From Sparta, New Jersey. Um, yeah, northern New Jersey, right outside. What was it like growing up there? <laughs> um, it was cool. I mean, uh, it's like a mountainous little area. We got lakes and stuff. So it's cool. Just try to spend some time outside and be one with nature and stuff like that, you know? Sure. And, uh, pretty close to the city so kind of dichotomous lifestyle of mine like kind of growing up a lot of the times in in the city and then at home and yeah was it fairly easy to get into the city like as a like in high school and stuff were you able to yeah it was one of those things where you like save up like 32 dollars throughout the week so you can get like a round trip ticket to to Spend uh in new york <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I always uh, envied the kids that grew up in the city or close to it where it's like you knew you could go out. You know, I grew up in the suburbs of San Diego, so there wasn't really any public transportation. But you could, yeah. you know, for where you are, you could just get out to, you know, the city and kind of run, run, run wild <laughs> for a yeah, bit. Really, um, really integral to my, yeah. my life. That's cool, man. Um, what about music? Do you come from a musical household? Um. I mean, just in terms of like, you know, both my older sisters were in band and like my whole family listens to a lot of music, uh, but not necessarily like I didn't have any like relatives in music or something like that. OK. And where did you start out in music? Were you a pian did you start off on piano or? Like, uh, I actually played like the tenor saxophone. So when I was growing really? up, yeah, I just like I played the alto and tenor sax in, in uh, school band. And honestly, it kind of. um gave me like an ear for what I really like to do and, and with my voice personally. Sure. Like how old were you when you started that? Were you like in fifth grade or whenever the school yeah, kind of started? Grade. Fourth, fourth grade. grade. Yeah. And did you do that all through high school then? Oh uh, yeah, I did. I, up until like my junior year, junior year, I, I started doing honors choir. Okay. Um, because I was trying to like make music and take it a little more serious and stuff. So. That's rad. Okay. So up till junior year, you said, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then when yeah. you, when you stopped doing that, you you went into honors choir. So were you always in choir? Then all I mean prior to that as well. Um yeah, I did like a lot of choir and stuff. Like my school had a really good music program. I'm really grateful for. So I was always really like able to learn a lot about theory and stuff like that, and just kind of like really embrace uh music. Mm -hmm. It sounded like you excelled in that. I mean, at least in choir, if you were able to get into the advanced classes, your junior uh, year. It was pretty easy. All you had to do was have like relative pitch. You would just play like a note on the piano. And then if you could sing it back, honestly, that was on his choir at the time. It was a brand new class, but that still I sounds pretty. I mean, I couldn't do that. If you just hit like a C, I wouldn't really hit that. You'd be surprised. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so you were working on music yourself, like your own uh, writing your own songs at that point as well. Yeah, so I was working with a couple of, like, my high school buddies, pretty much, just, like, homies that were helping me, like, produce and, uh, and like, finish songs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I would just kind of make and release songs. It was, that, was, that was my vibe back then. Same here, same now. Sure. Would you, like, go out and, and play these songs anywhere, or was it mainly just throwing them on, on the internet? Uh, no, I definitely, like... I was always really into playing live. So all around northern New Jersey and South Jersey and Jersey City and then New York with like like uh, Webster Hall and wow. uh, a couple other different places. I, I started playing really young and yeah, I was playing music around like the time I was like 14, started playing live shows, 15, like, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. And with, with that, obviously, it probably wasn't this project that you're doing now, was it? 
the time I actually went by Kid Riz, which is so funny because people used to ask me like what I would be named as a as a grown up Riz. So I had to figure it out. I always thought it might be adult Riz, but Riz Lavi <laughs> was the one. Riz, you you settled on Riz Lavi. I like that. Yeah. But it's similar to what, like, I mean, what were your songs, uh, like, what did they kind of sound like back then? They were, like, about corruption in the government and, like... Oh, wow, political. Yeah, like, I was really, like, into that shit. I still am. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I just always, I tried to just make really, I've, I've always made kind of intense music. Like, sure. sometimes it's, like... um. Sometimes it can be pretty chill, but low key, there's always like a under layer of like intensity, which I'm always kind of a fan of in life. Like mm -hmm. I like life to be a little not tense, but sometimes intense is cool. Sure, sure. And w with like uh, you know, go out and playing live, like were you able to kind of start building a little fan base, or where did you kind of start seeing some like validation for what you were doing? Yeah, these are such good memories. Um, I started playing around like this venue called like Loki the Stanhope House mm -hmm. and I remember I used to just try to open for every artist that like would come through there and after a while like a lot of the same people would start coming to those shows and different venues around New Jersey like I remember Mexicali Live and T-Mac New Jersey I remember uh, of course Webster Hall was like another big one that I played a lot like tried to open for a lot of people there um, yeah, that's like an iconic one there in, in New York. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The basement at Webster was like, that was like a childhood. Like, like we used to just get drunk and go there. And like, it was cute, you know, 17. <laughs> it was cute. 16. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all, all those people started seeing me open the shows a lot. And I just kind of became like, like, uh, there was like a little air around what I was doing as like the opener that doesn't suck. Like that's what that would, that, that I was referred to as because every opener around that time was just like really like bad. Mm -hmm. And like people didn't want to go to their shows that early until I started playing them because they'd be like, Oh, you should go for the opener. That doesn't suck. Like they're good. Like there's like a good artist that's opening the show. And then, uh, I that must have felt pretty good. You're like, all right, I'm, I'm. People will show up early to these shows because I'm the opener that does not suck. Yeah, exactly. And then like, um, I started just kind of like kept playing those sh shows and like kind of doubling down on that. And then also at the same time doing like ciphers in Secaucus, New Jersey, and like Jersey City, and just kind of become like becoming known as like, just like more and more known. And then. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I started like headlining shows, I did like a couple headlining shows as Kid Riz. And then uh, this was around the time I was like maybe 18. I played like TLA in Philly, um, where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I used to play a bunch of shows here in Philly when I was going to Drexel. And then... Uh, and then, yeah, I just like left music and I just dropped out of school and like got really into like myself and my spiritual awakening that I like had been kind of putting off. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of like was crashing on couches in New York City and not sleeping for weeks at a time and like barely eating and like just like really just trying to transcend like what this life was for me and That's then fascinating and then like after a few months and years of that like i put all my like life force energy into this project called found and i came back like at, with my professional debut so like pretty much no one knows any of that stuff that i told you like up to this point like everyone pretty much just knows found uh and me starting there but I had a whole like career, like little local music gathering um, from before that. And I think those people who knew me before that also had really good taste in things um, and like new music that was going to pop up early. Because when I when I dropped Found, my first project as Riz V, I had like an audience already of like people of tastemakers mm -hmm. and uh, Spotify at the time. I don't know if they still do it, but they they would like identify like certain people 
that were listening to music as like markers. I'm probably butchering this explanation, but it'd be like markers. And if enough mm-hmm. people that were like tastemaker listeners listen to your music, it would get flagged. And uh, yeah, my song Pisces got like flagged when I first dropped it and it got put on Fresh Finds. Wow. It was, like the first, like I'd never heard of a playlist before, you know, like no one was doing Spotify playlists. It wasn't really like that, you know? I, I, I didn't have that intention. I wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna drop and I'm gonna get on all these playlists. Like mm-hmm. I didn't even know what it was. And I woke up one day and, and my friend had texted me, blown up my phone. And he was like, dude, you're on Fresh Finds. And I was like, I don't even know what that is, bro. But I checked it and there was like, I don't even know, 25,000 likes on it. And I was like, oh, dude, this is so sick. Like 25,000 people can hear my song. And it was cool. Like, was yeah, really, wow. Uh, yeah, because you put yeah. that out in 2017, at least according to yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at it that way, I mean, 2017, Spotify was obviously around, but it wasn't. Now it's like the gold standard of, of you know, how many streams you have. A lot of people go, yeah. oh, go to Spotify, right? Or I put this song out. Okay, go to Spotify. I mean, there's others, but I feel like, you know, Spotify is like the go the go to. And so in 2017, maybe it wasn't as much that it hadn't really got to the next level where it is now. Yeah. Uh, but to to be selected like that, that I mean, that's so incredible. Um, it was honestly a huge honor, and they uh they called me in, and we had a like a meeting, and um. They were like, okay, like the next time you drop, we'll give you the cover of Fresh Finds. So I like went back with my producer, Dan, who I'd been working with. And we were like, let's make a whole project. So I made the the sequel to Found called Keep. I made it in 10 days in South Georgia, uh, like in the middle of nowhere, Texas, uh, middle of nowhere, Georgia with the windows open and just like one stoplight town. Like, you know, just really checking the vibe. And yeah, that was that's, that has songs like Power Lines and songs like Stay, which is still in my top five. And mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy. Wow, that's so you did two you did two records in one or two EPs. It sounds like in one year. Yeah, we did to have that much. Yeah, I mean, to, for them to go, yeah, next time you put something out, we'll put you on a cover. It's like, okay, I'm gonna go put something out like now, exactly like, while it's while it's hot. That's crazy. Yeah. I had the release date before I made the project. No way. Yeah. And you just submit that to them and they kind of choose what one they're going to feature or how that No, work? actually I chose and I ended up choosing this record called Old Young, which, you know, I think artists never really know which song is going to pop. And mm-hmm. I just thought that one had a pretty infectious chorus and I liked it a lot because it was so personal. Um, but like two of the other songs on the record ended up being way bigger. Um, but I mean, it just goes to show like, the playlist can do a lot for you and and uh help you get known and seen and you know bless it but it's like the people are going to pick the music you know i i picked the song that i thought that would do the best on the playlist but it ended up being that the two songs that no one you know the first and the last song on the record didn't expect anyone to hear them you know they just those do the best right those are the ones that yeah got the biggest off of that one that's interesting um i don't know if you he would would even talk about this but i'm just curious like when it came to kind of stopping music and then you said you kind of went into this like spiritual awakening um where you put everything down like was that something that you like like was there a moment that you just were like i it's it's time like i mean what was there something that happened or i don't even not happen isn't the good word but like you just said okay i'm gonna hang up the 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 music for a bit and just kind of do my own thing I was just being called to grow. Interesting. So okay. in the time period, I, I was like, I didn't feel I was getting the credit I deserved because of like, you know, I don't know, various circumstances. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to like make something that was just undeniable and infectious and made people feel like they didn't want to put it down. And uh, I wanted to take a lot of different genres that weren't being touched at the time and put it into a melting pot and just be unapologetically myself and really like you know it's called found and Mm -hmm. so of course there's like found like found yourself and then there's also like found like the found of a ship is like um like to to be a well-found ship is like to be a seaworthy well-equipped ship 
Oh, well, okay, interesting. I didn't know that. Alternate definition that like sure. you can see on Google. And yeah, I just wanted to show that I was like a very well stocked seaworthy vessel, seaworthy ship, because I feel like I have all these like, you know, characteristics and just kind of like interests and expressions that I don't see a lot reflected. And I didn't see a lot reflected at the time. There was really no one making music that was so like genre blending and, and kind of covering all the bases that I wanted to cover, mainly because I just wanted to hear it. And I didn't hear it anywhere. So I made it because I wanted to hear it. Wow. I love that. And it's like you were able to lock into all those things. And then you presented something that other people obviously latched onto and were like, whoa, like, where has this been? I feel so. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's I mean, did was there like at, during that time period, you must have had a, a moment where you're like, OK, now it's time. Like you kind of got it where you felt you're having that calling to kind of get back into into music again well i never left i just i only like stopped putting out records in order to like make better records i spent uh, okay. every minute of every single day trying to make five songs like at that time i didn't have a dollar you know and i'm recording i'm like living in new york city trying to like you know I was working in Times Square, taking photos of people from like all around the world, visiting Times Square. I'd walk up to them and be like, hey, like you just like have a vibe. I took this picture. If you fuck with it, we could take more pictures and I'll, set, I'll like airdrop all of them to you for like 50 bucks. And I did that for 10 hours a day, every fucking day. And uh, me and my friend Ian Lamb and um, yeah, we did it every day. And then we would work until like 1230 until the square was empty and uh, i would just wait for my friend john muller um john muller was working at flux studios he still is god bless and uh he was like he heard me rap one time out loud this song called soap and he was like yo bro you need to record that and he was like come to the studio uh like five days from now and uh, i'll sneak you in and we'll track it for free and so we just started doing this thing where he would just sneak me into the studio in the middle of the night and I'll just start tracking all these songs, tracking, tracking, tracking. And some ended up working out, some didn't. Sometimes I would fly down to Florida. Like, you know, at the time, Dan, my producer, just like really believed in me, believed that I had a voice that needed to be heard that was doing something different and and um, still does believe in me like that. And literally like, like we would, yeah, I would just fly down to Florida and I would just sit there for five, 10 days and not do anything but, you know, like eat Popeyes and, and make music, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that like 10 month, 12 month period of making sound, just like, just for five songs, you know, like I went through so much just to make those five songs. For six months, seven months, I had soap written. I wrote it February 11th, twenty. 16 i didn't record it until like june or july of that year wow. and i had been trying to record it the whole time that i had it you know so at the time recording equipment wasn't really as accessible as it is now like everyone has a scarlet like i could i could hit 15 homies on my phone right now and go to their crib i don't even know what city i'm in i'm in philly right now i could find <laughs> people to record me right and, you know what i mean i could like go to any radio shack and ha i could do it on my phone in five minutes like there's so many ways to make a song right now just didn't feel like that back then to me i don't know i guess my knowledge base has increased and i guess like technology has gotten technology better. definitely i mean you, know? you, you could i've heard people record stuff on like especially with covid and everything like I, i've interviewed artists that were like yeah i just cut their the vocal on my like voice memo on my iphone yeah. Do and then I couldn't recreate the emotion I had in that in that take. So that's the one that you hear on the record. It's like, what? Yep. <laughs> it's just wild. And you like that. And it's awesome. I, I love. Yeah, I love it. I love that we're here for this. Um, but at the time, it just wasn't like that. And I just did what I could to, to get it done. Yeah. I, so I spent like a year making the first like project, the first five songs found. And then I made the second one in 10 days and dropped it like two months later. May 8th. And then that one, I mean, to have the one do well, right, right off the gate, you didn't even really realize what Spotify playlisting was. And then to have yeah. those songs do well. And then it's like, okay, I got to go back and put a project out. And then that one does even better. Yeah. I mean, 
that's that must have been you know another you know reinforcing what you should be doing and then was it was napkins the next one you put out right after that too i mean then that one just like, yes yeah, so i spent like crazy the that year just like kind of piecing together a couple songs that i felt could be like my ones um for napkins i remember getting the beat and just being like this beat is so ass <laughs> but i got out of the shower and i had an idea and i had no other beats on my phone so i literally just opened up the first the last beat that was in my text messages and i put the idea on that beat and that was napkins oh my gosh but yeah and i just went to the studio um with my friend nick uh valhalla studios mm -hmm. and um yeah I've tracked it recorded it the whole like last half of that song is like freestyle I've recorded it like wrote it and recorded it and like I wrote the first half. It's very articulate, like, um, in like a two hour drive to the city with Dan to go record the song, like on our way to the studio. And then the second half, I just freestyled in like 30 seconds while we were in the booth. And it's just like such a good dichotomous little mix of like real pure off the top, like shit. And then also like real thinker, uh, writer songwriterness in the first half i love the song yeah and yes that, was that another like, like was that a spotify thing where you started to see stuff kind of go off or did that yeah we were on like in a different way you know like every playlist and like like all the viral 50s and stuff like that and it was a really good moment um so yeah i think that song just like i just i took that whole culmination of those first like couple years and just kind of articulated it in this one song, in this one moment, um, which I've done a couple times. And uh, I think those those ones always really go fit pretty well. And I felt like at the time, like all of the like New York memories and like just everything that I had. Um, I'm really big into like life, like la vie is life, you know, the life. Mm -hmm. So like life force energy is really all you can do is like, input intention and energy into something and it'll and it'll go and i just had the intention and energy for it to be like heard all over the city and that was what happened but it was with a couple of different cities too sure. oh yeah a few <laughs> with 39 million plays i'm sure it got a uh, you know reached a little bit outside of new york um but you put a record out or you you put in another one out between this one but with feed that came out in 2020 how did like the the pan was that put out pre pandemic or was that during the pandemic? And how yeah, did that kind of affect your songwriting? So feed was like I was making that in the studio, like from when, like from before pandemic. So I'm in New York City. I'm in Browns, Brooklyn, like the craziest neighborhood, and we're just like locked out in the studio every day. Uh in this like super hot studio with no ac and you're just like kind of like losing your mind a little bit like having showered having slept like eight day and days lockout like i mean showered you know what i mean but sure you know sometimes no <laughs> and so, and so you gotta like, do you gotta do. yeah you gotta do what you gotta do so then as i'm finishing the record we start hearing like oh there's like a disease there's like an illness or there's like a virus and like new york started getting so scared you know so it was like a week of like yo what the fuck is about to happen and then it was like a day of everyone being like the mass exodus of like trying to get out of the city so my sister who also lives in the city and i went back to new jersey to stay with my mom my, my middle sister also went um to stay at our like family home mm -hmm. and yeah i was just like trying to get this record mixed during the pandemic and it was really hard um that songs like she said and tesla and nighttime in atlanta and something cosmic and hold and yeah i was just uh i made those songs with my friend sean and dan and, um yeah and then we dropped it like right in like the midst of like the riot like the um protests and everything so it kind of got a little like swept under the rug compared to everything that was going on and somehow still 
those songs still cut there. through. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, so crazy. Now you know you hear everyone singing them, singing those words. It's so crazy to see. Yeah, man. And then you even did the like the, the you put out another kind of deluxe version of it on Spotify, and I listened to some of the live versions. That's killer too that you were able to do that. Yeah, man. Thank you. We recorded those at uh, seventy Hester Deep Dimension seventy in New York City amazing and well so tell me uh, haven just came out right i mean yeah. Within, yeah so what was like the this is your debut album i mean did you know you're going to be writing an album going into it like uh what was the process behind this this yeah so album? all my projects like found keep breathe feed all of those projects are all intertwining and kind of it, like building on top of each other so oh, like, really okay yeah haven is like the penultimate uh project in the series of like all the chakras so found is like your your root chakra you know your base your foundation keep is like your sacral chakra the things you want to keep close you know the things that you keep close to you um breathe is like your solar plexus and your heart chakra the way that you ignite that fire in you by breathing and then also connecting with others through the breath is like that's how you connect the best you know um so that's like the solar plexus in the heart and then feed is like your throat chakra so the way that you're speaking and what you're feeding into oh shit my phone froze awesome well um you were talking about how i think you're up until the feed feed your yes yeah throat chakra um what you feed yourself and the thoughts that you feed yourself and what you say to yourself and what you say to the world um and then Haven is like the brow chakra. So the way that you see the world and what potentiality you see and like everything you could ever envision and how fear is how, you know, fear is like the main blocker of envisionment and how an excitement is like the only cure for fear. So you try to like, try to transmute fear through excitement throughout this whole roller coaster ride of 14 15 songs interesting so with the even back to found like is that is that mindset in each ep going into it or each each uh you know different portion of what became the the final piece here or yeah, was it just written that way or you, you kind of had that underlying feeling in each each um, record no that's how i planned everything wow it's like my um my framework of my career how i how i intend to to go through this first chapter of like just these first um it'll end up being six projects wow so you already know the sixth one yeah head high hold your head high i'm at it oh my gosh so like going into even haven like uh obviously you didn't have the songs written for that when you kind of started you just kind of knew what the future was going to look like how you were going to kind of lay it out yep and then when you wrote a song did you know like okay did you ever write it or like did any of the songs come earlier like okay i wrote this song like especially on the the on haven was it like one of these you could i wrote it in like 2018 but i knew it fit in this chakra like yeah later like down the line again go again is like the potentiality of like trying to see it again you know like if you fail if you go on the rock okay and you end up at little planets which is the like penultimate song of the record that is like the success okay mm -hmm. but if you end up failing or needing to go on the journey again you know which we all do not necessarily failing but you know we all kind of have to learn a lesson a couple times sometimes, you know? And oh, yeah, for sure. You don't show the universe that you've, that you've understood the lesson. It'll teach you the lesson again. So sometimes you need a little bit of energy to get you through that relearning of that lesson. And go again is kind of that bit of sweet energy to get you back into that, like, gentle place to, to be able to learn again. Oh, that's, so that's why it's the last track on the record. And then you go back, you could, you could play it again, from, again from step one. Yeah. That's again. amazing, man. And was that something that you had already kind of, was that a song that was written earlier on? That was written like, that was probably the oldest song on the record. Wow. Yeah. But I love it. It's arguably the most. I went through hell for that song just to have it. Oh, really? 
just yeah. like fighting to get it on that record or just in general yeah, yeah just fighting to have the record have the rights to it and stuff wow um yeah. but i mean it kind of sums up the whole experience I'm, I'm glad you were able to get it right i mean to get, have that and kind of have it okay now it's time to start over it, if yeah. you failed you get, not failed but you know you can you can start back at step one and it's funny because i actually made two albums for this album um, really yeah i made an album before some of the songs are the same but i made a, another ride it was a slightly different roller coaster ride of an album and uh I liked it just as much, but I, um, it just wasn't the, the right ride, I guess. So I made another one and go again is the last song on both albums. So when I made the first album for Haven, it, it wasn't called Haven, but, um, for this project, it was go again on the last song. And then I had to go again and make the whole album again. And, yeah. Oh, wow. It stayed the last song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow uh will you will you ever put that other one out or you, it's just kind of like um, it's just there it was an experience that you had a you got to have and i hope some of the songs get to come out they're i like them a lot they're uh um yeah songs like zoom songs like lightning uh like two 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 pangea um yeah, just like a bunch of records on there that I really fucked with that I, I don't know that will ever... Oh, the one called Ice Coffee. Ice Coffee is a great song. Um, but yeah, I hope they come out. We'll yeah. see what happens. Are you, and these aren't probably any that you play in your set either, huh? So it's just like no, ones just that you know n none of your fans have heard of yet. Or maybe mm -hmm. won't. <laughs> mm, maybe never. But yeah. We'll yeah. That's interesting. Uh, well, how's the tour going? I mean, you got a lot of dates. Yeah, the tour is good. Um, tour is awesome. We just played Connecticut last night. We played New York City a couple nights ago on my birthday. Oh, wow. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks. That must have been a big deal. New York on your birthday. New York City on my birthday. Yeah, Valley hometown Valley. show. Yeah. Wow. That was cool. That's really rad, man. Well, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for, for doing this, dude. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I have one more question before uh, I let you go. This has been awesome. I maybe we can chat again when the when the the next the final the sixth piece of the puzzle comes out. Um, sure. But uh, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Um, advice for aspiring artists would be, I think, just like get quiet so that you can listen as best as you can. Like, get yourself as quiet as you can be. I think everything in this world is telling us to be louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. And it's just like, be quiet for one second inside and try to get as quiet as you can inside so that you can hear what you need to hear. And then be accurate in making it because we are, we are the antennas. We are the universe's mouthpiece. So we have to hear the signal as clearly as we can. You got to be quiet to hear that.